you guys, you played a really tough schedule all year. Add up, you played 11 NCAA tournament teams, 16 games, almost half your schedule went eight and eight, so did real well. Just how, how do you do? You feel like you almost were playing NCAA schedule all year, and how do you think that's that helps you for this game? Just not looking like you didn't ask the question. Yeah, I think uh, we've been playing a great schedule all year. I think we were prepared for the tournament, and I didn't know we had uh, played 11 teams at, that's going into the tournament. So it's going to be fun, and we're ready to play. Yeah. Uh, kind of what he said, uh, I think it prepared us. Um, Coach always tells us that he set our schedule up to prepare us for this time of the year, and um, I think experience is going to play a big part in this tournament. Jaylen, what kind of impact do you think Daryl's personality has had on you the last couple of years, just being so outspoken? What, not just you, but maybe like Daniel and some of the others on the team. What, what kind of effect has he had? <laughs> he ain't got no effect on me, dude. Lame, bro. I trust me. <laughs> nah, Daryl, cool. You know, he always you know, got to crack a joke or something like that. You think he's cool, but I mean, he's pretty decent every now and then, you know, when he's antisocial. <laughs> Has it been funny, I mean, just different for you? Watch a guy with that kind of personality on the court, not just off the court, but on the court. Yeah, the emotion, the the love for the sport, the love for the game, the competitiveness, oh, man, and just I it. And, but get your hand off me, bro. It just just being want to just be want to be a winner. Just love his city, his state, and just the university. I make people smile. He didn't want to smile right there. I make people smile. That's the great thing about me. Ain't that right, Bob? Right. <laughs> I can't agree with. Him. Uh, for both guys, they don't turn the ball over a lot. They've had 10 games with single-digit turnovers. How does that change things for you guys defensively? Uh, it doesn't change at all. We're just going to go out there and um, play our brand of basketball. And um, we pride ourselves on making the other team turn the ball over. So um, I don't think the Big East has a team like us that pressures and uh, speeds the other teams up. So it'll be a good game. Yeah, I think I think this is the best time of the year, really. Just uh, just off last year, because we see different teams and they see they seeing us as, as a different team as well. I think we one of the most difficult teams to play against and get ready for. And it's just going to be interesting to see us play them Friday. Are there any SEC teams that, or any other teams you played that Butler remind you of in similar style as far as preparing for them? Um, from watching film, I can see a little bit of Arbin. Uh, they shoot a lot of threes. That's what Arvin does. Um, they like to run. Um, they can get scrappy on defense. I didn't see a lot of scrappiness, but they can get scrappy on defense. So I can I can say I see a lot of Arvin in them. What did you two learn in your first tournament last year about playing a full 40 and, and closing out games, especially with that North Carolina game that maybe you can take over to this season? Uh, just anything can happen in the uh, – <laughs> Uh, it's just tournament time, you know. You just got to play every play like it's your last. Even if you got something to do with a last second rebound, you just need that rebound. And uh, every minute is crucial, every second is crucial. It's just got to come ready to play. Um, it's like a whole new season. Um, it's a lot more physical, a lot more faster. Um, you got to just leave it all on the floor. And, um, like when I say that, I mean going after every loose ball, every rebound, um, every rotation has to be on point. And the main thing is just you have to believe, especially a team like us. Um, I feel like we're the under underdogs in every situation. So um, you just got to go in there be believing that you can accomplish what you came to accomplish. Uh, you guys have won 40. When, under Mike Anderson, Arkansas has won 40 games when leading at halftime. What is it about coach at half that gets you guys prepared for those second halves with leads? Um, I mean, when you go in at halftime, you're just confident that you're going to come out the same way you did in the first half or even better. Um, one thing he always tells us is uh, the game is not 20 minutes, it's 40 minutes. So when he says that, I think it kind of clicks in our head that um, we got to come out and play a lot harder than what we did the first half if we want to win. I think there's been times we've been down at half and we came back and won. So, yeah, I think when he says uh, he said uh, 20 minutes and then he says 40 minutes, but then he just talk bad to you out of nowhere and it just clicks in your head, like okay, we, we gotta come out, and come out firing, just 
just emphasize defense like we always do. I think that's our biggest thing when we say defense and come out second half and it clicks in our head that we got to win. They got a quick temper behind the scenes, so that kind of gets us going in the second half. I guess I don't know how much you guys have watched film or broken down, guys. You have n number thirty for them, Kalen Martin, at six seven wing. He, he led the S or the uh, Big East in scoring in conference games, almost uh, twenty four points a game. Number thirty, is he a guy you guys have have noticed anything about? And if so, just what do you think makes him a tough player? Because he he doesn't he's pretty pretty far under the national radar. It seems like. Uh yeah, he's a um, he's a he's a great player. I think I watched the game when they played Villanova, and uh, I realized that that game that. He's probably one of the best four men in the country. Um, he's tough. That's, that's basically all I can say. He's tough. Um, we're going to try to see how tough he is Friday. So. Yeah, I think his, his game uh, reminds me of um, Schofield from Tennessee a little bit. He's uh, kind of big, real physical. Uh, he can do a lot of things for that team. He does a lot of things for that team. So we're just going to see uh, how he plays Friday. Daryl, last year after the North Carolina game, there's a shot of you sitting on the ground, upset, obviously, after that game. How much does that feeling drive you this year? Um, I actually had that picture set as my phone background up until this season started. Um, it just motivates me and shows me how close we were to beating the number one team in the country. And that game actually showed me that in this tournament, anything can happen. Um, like I said, if you just go out there and believe and, and give it your all, it doesn't matter what seed a team is, any team can go down. But that really, that game really motivated me, knowing that I actually set out the last three or four minutes with cramps. And I'm hoping that doesn't happen again, because I want to give it my all this time. And if I'm going to lose, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out with a fight. Few more, Decker. For both of you guys, um, you, you both went through the putting your names in, in the draft last year. and and then took them back out. But I'm wondering in a few weeks when this is all done, however long it takes, what, what kind of advice would you both have for Daniel as he, he makes the decision, whatever decision he has to make? Hmm. Uh, just, I mean, make your decision based off you, yourself, you know. Just make yourself happy. Uh, don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Just do what you want to do. Just do what's best for you and your family in your situation. Oh. Um. Basically, kind of what Jason said, just uh, go with whatever makes you happy. Um, I think he has to remember that it's, it's nobody nobody else's choice but his. Um, you you got to live with the choices you make in life. And if he decides to go to the NBA, um, that's a decision that he made personally, and he has to be happy with it, whether it's wrong or right. Uh, I think that's just all a part of becoming a man. You got to live with the choices you make. For both of you, how critical is the bench going to be? The bench play, bench scoring, rebounds, everything that the bench, you guys need from the bench, how, how critical is that going to be in this tournament after maybe not getting exactly what you needed at the SEC tournament? Um, I'm not going to say we just didn't get what we needed at the SEC tournament. I mean, that was a, I mean, we're a young team as far as our bench, and I think those guys, um, I don't know if they I don't know if they really just looked at it as as we looked at it as last year we was in the championship game and this was their first time uh so I think if we were to do the SEC tournament over again it would be different but um our bench will play a big part in this tournament I think they realize that now I mean it's been a long season uh starters usually play a lot of minutes and around this time this is where you know your bench is the most effective yeah, I think our bench, uh, our bench was good for that first tournament. You know, they was young, but I think they learned a lot through the tournament. I mean, I think they're going to be ready for this week. They know what to do. They know what we expect from them. And uh, it's going to be a great experience for them. I mean, hopefully they get back there next year as well. So uh, I think they're going to enjoy this time and choose it. I mean, precious this time wisely. Yeah, Jalen, you know, Daryl talked about his, his emotions and motivation after the North Carolina game. I was wondering if you could talk about that, too. And, and Daryl, when, when you mentioned the Villanova game, do you want to talk about when, when Butler beat Villanova? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I thought, but I want to make sure. Well, I'm not talking about when Villanova beat Butler. I mean, when Butler <laughs> beat Villanova, 101 <laughs> <laughs> No, but, uh, yeah, last year motivation, uh, yeah, I, I remember the play like it was yesterday. I mean, I remember Joel Berry going up, shooting a shot. <laughs> And we had a re we could have got the rebound, but instead we was 
I just standing still looking for a call and they ain't calling and then they got a basket. So that was a travel. It was no a good ex- travel. No great excuse. travel. No excuses. Great though. travel. But, any excuses, but that was I mean, it happened. And we lost. So that motivation always sticks in our head. That question always being asked, even when I go back home. And it's, it's, it's going to be different this year.